At the time of this recording, we are a year and a half into the COVID-19 pandemic. I believe this is important to note because in today's episode, we're discussing anxiety, overwhelm, and the practice of Sabbath. And I believe that in the last past year and a half, pretty much all of us have become familiar with this idea of anxiety and overwhelm, which is why I'm excited today that Nicole is with us. Nicole is a licensed med- mental health counselor in the state of Michigan. She owns Restorative Counseling Center, a private group practice offering mental health therapy to her local community. Her passion is journeying alongside women struggling with anxiety and overwhelm. In doing this, she blends biblical principles with psychological tools and techniques. And I've asked Nicole to come on here today and talk to us about this concept of anxiety and overwhelmed and how the practice of Sabbath can help with those two things. And so thank you so much for being here, Nicole. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Rachel, for having me. All right. To kick our conversation off, Nicole, how about we start with um, the people you see coming into your practice, especially Christian moms. I, I know that you and I were talking a little bit how you see a lot of moms struggling with anxiety and overwhelm. And I was wondering if you have any insights into why we seem to be experiencing this on such a, a large level. Yeah, um, absolutely. That's a huge majority of what I see in my practice. Um, like I was sharing with you, about 90% of my clients come to me with um, their main reason for counseling being anxiety. And as we dig in deeper to their story and what's going on in their life, of course, there's a lot of things that are underlying that. But some common threads that I see, um, a lot of women are burnt out. um, And I think a lot of that has to do with the the hurried culture that we live in, this busy world, quote unquote, Mm -hmm. um, and constantly moving from one thing to the next, not taking time to notice. Also, we live in a very fear-based culture, and now more than ever, I think that that's true as well. And also, I would say either a lack of boundaries or not an understanding of boundaries, feeling like boundaries are selfish. So a lot of times we'll do a lot of work around boundaries as well. Those are all great points. Let's dig into a little bit deeper with examples with motherhood, like you talked about boundaries. Are there any kind of boundaries that you see pop up? within motherhood that you're talking about that affect this anxiety and overwhelm. Yeah. And I just want to make sure I I share too, that this is not from a place of judgment Mm -hmm. um, and that every story is unique. And again, when we're working on a one-on-one in counseling, we can dig underneath of what's kind of going on in that person's story. But what I see presenting a lot is that um, from a, a, a good intention, moms tend to center their lives around their children. Mm. Um, And while that, again, is a good intention and God has called us to that as a ministry in our home, we can swing to an unhealthy state of that where we're not taking time out for God, we're not taking time out for our marriage, um, and we're not taking time out for ourselves. Mm. And all of those things... um, can help us be a better mom. And so I think that's one of the main things that I see is just feeling this pressure that it has to be all about our children all of the time. Mm -hmm. And that leads to that burnout, I think. And there are some, I think, healthy boundaries that can be in place there. But there's examining what are those expectations that you either are putting on yourself or that culture is putting on you. Mm. Yes. Expectations we put on ourselves. Uh-huh. <laughs> we can we can be really brutal to ourselves, can't we? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I see a very loud inner critic in a lot of my clients as well. So um, and sometimes that voice comes from maybe our temperament or personality. Sometimes that voice comes from outside culture. And sometimes that voice comes from messages that we've received mm-hmm. from our family story or our relationships or church or whatever it might be. There are these scripts that are running through our head and um, typically people that struggle with anxiety and depression usually too have a pretty loud inner critic. Mm. So how do you see the practice of Sabbath kind of quieting that inner inner critic and giving space to that? You had mentioned we kind of rush through life and we don't stop to like observe and, and I, I, I typically say process 
the information mm-hmm. we just consumed. So how do you see the practice of Sabbath fitting in with all of this? Yeah, so I think Sabbath really aligns with that practice. Um, and when we pause and we notice, then we can make um, shifts if we need to. We can notice patterns, maybe unhealthy patterns. We can connect to ourselves, to others, to God. So I think that Sabbath can be a really helpful space and tool to begin to slow down, to pause, and to notice. And we may do that in a structured time on a Sabbath, but also just giving ourselves permission to do that throughout our entire week as well. Would you say that Sabbath gives you a space to become more self-aware and more aware of God's presence in your life? Absolutely. Yeah. I think it helps me personally. Um, and I see in uh, other people as well to just kind of be grounded, to kind mm-hmm. of recenter, um, and to connect. And like I said, to God ultimately, but also to ourselves. I often say that when I started practicing Sabbath, I noticed like a stabilizing peace mm-hmm. come over me. Mm-hmm. And I think that talks to that idea of We are in a culture that's hurried and busy and fear-based, like you said, and that can infiltrate our everyday and it can kind of cause us to be riding a roller coaster of emotions Mm -hmm. throughout the day. You know, one minute you're like, oh, good. And the next minute you're panicking about everything on your to-do list. And I do feel like when I started, that's definitely where I was at. And when I started practicing Sabbath, it kind of just... it it brought the extremes kind of more into a stabilized Mm -hmm. um, throughout the day, a stabilizing piece just kind of blanketed everything. So you practice Sabbath yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about your practice? Yeah. So for us, it is on Sundays. Um, That is a day of the week that we attend church um, that typically has Um, nothing on the calendar outside of maybe church related activities, like, um, maybe a youth group or a small group night Mm -hmm. or something like that. But outside of that, we don't have activities on Sundays. And so that's a great day for us to be able to slow down, um, to be intentional with our time. And so it doesn't Mm -hmm. necessarily mean for us personally that nothing ends up on the calendar, right? but we're just very intentional with that. Maybe it's a family lunch or, um, a bike ride as a family, or we're getting together with friends that, you know, we connect with on a deeper level. And we typically linger a little bit longer at meals Mm -hmm. and things like that. Also for me, um, I'm a pretty extreme introvert and (laughs) raising teen daughters and owning a business and all of those things. um, Life is very full. And so on Sundays, I tend to shut myself in my room for a couple of hours and Mm. my husband gets the same opportunity. Our kids are kind of um, a little bit slower on that day too. And they just kind of know that that's the rhythm of life at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I do, I'm intentional about having some time and space for myself. Um, That looks a little bit different every time. Sometimes I'm journaling, sometimes I'm napping, sometimes I'm reading something just for pleasure. Mm -hmm. Um, it, It can look very, very different, but I am intentional about having alone time and solitude on that day as well. Do you, um, I would imagine that having a job that literally is talking to people all the time, that for you as an introvert, you're like, I need that break. Like I need to retreat so that you can fill up and then serve the rest Mm -hmm. of the week. And so I think that's really cool that you've recognized that in yourself and that your Sabbath benefits your work life as Mm -hmm. much as your, you know, and vice versa. And so I think that's really cool that, that you have scheduled that time for you to recharge in a way that, um, recharge in a way that speaks to the way that you're uniquely designed. I totally agree. And I know that on weeks where maybe I don't get that Sabbath practice, um, because of travel or, you know, something comes Mm -hmm. up, I, I feel more anxious about the week coming up because I know how important it is for me to have that mental and emotional downtime for, like you said, for me to be prepared to work with my clients and also just my family and emotional Mm -hmm. needs that are there too. And so that is really important to me. And I think you said something important too, which is paying attention to what your needs are in the Sabbath. And I know that I've I've heard you speak to that before too, um, Mm -hmm. because my Sabbath may not look like somebody else's. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And that is where also that self-awareness work can come Mm -hmm. into play too, because the more that you know about yourself, it's not to judge that or increase that inner critic, but to just recognize how you are uniquely wired and then to be able to respond to that. Right. So, um, you have teenage girls, you said, Mm -hmm. and so do you Sabbath together as a family in any, like the day you said is slower. Mm -hmm. It's intentional with your time. Do you have things that you will not do on that day for your family? That's a good question. Um, so we have had this practice. I was trying to think before this, I don't know. It's been a few years. And so as they've gotten into a busier, fuller time of their own life as <laughs> preteens and teens, right? Um, this is what they know is mm-hmm. that Sundays are slower. And so I, they don't typically request, unless it's something really unique, um, okay. they don't typically request to like hang out with friends um, and that, that type of thing. I think how long they, have you guys, how long have you been practicing Sabbath as a family? It's been years. I, I don't okay. know. Um, maybe three or four. Okay. I'm not sure exactly. So you started when they were younger and they have just, it's become a rhythm of life for mm-hmm. your family. Yeah. And they yep. just know it. They, they just okay. know it. And I'm trying to think if we ever had like a really intentional conversation that this is what it is, but I yeah. think we've just established a rhythm that this is what life looks like on Sundays for us. Okay. Now, are um, they involved in any like sports or anything? Yes. Yep. So both of them are involved in sports. Um, I have a daughter who's a swimmer and then a daughter who does horseback riding and occasionally something, an opportunity for one of those things will come up on a Sunday. If it's a really unique opportunity, we'll discuss that as a family and decide that maybe that does make sense. Um, but generally speaking, they just kind of know that that's how it is. And I think they value that time as well. So do you not allow games on Sundays? Like during your Sabbath, like how do you navigate sports? I'm asking because people like, yeah, I'm not there yet. So I'm like, I'm looking at the wisdom (laughs) ahead of me because I know it's going to, so far all the um, sports stuff we've done has been like Fridays and Saturdays, you know? So my daughter, who's a swimmer, there are sometimes weekend uh, swim meets where there will be Saturday and Sunday events. And so what we have done in the past, because this is an option is that we just have her choose events that are on Saturday because they, they okay. can choose which events that they want to do within that program. Um, my daughter who does horseback riding, she has had a, a horse show on a Sunday, but that is not, it's a regular not common. And yeah. so we have, have participated in that and talked about that. And that's been, that's been okay. I think if it were something more frequent, like I'm thinking about moms who maybe um, encounter this on a regular basis, mm-hmm. I think that um, looking at your calendar and saying, okay, family, is there time during this week? Maybe this week it's not on Sunday, Mm -hmm. but is there time that we can carve out space for that? Um, Or giving yourself permission and grace that it's okay that 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 Sunday maybe maybe isn't going to look like the rest of them or whatever the Sabbath day is or or time. Maybe not throwing away all the whole day. Right. Just because you have a competition in the morning Mm -hmm. doesn't mean you can't Sabbath in the afternoon is what you're saying. Okay. Yep. Yep. I think sometimes, and this goes back to the expectations that can create anxiety. Sometimes we have an expectation of what something's supposed to look like. or We want it to fit in a certain box. Mm -hmm. And if we can just give ourselves permission and to give ourselves grace that it might not look like that. Sometimes that's enough to just relieve some of that anxiety too. Right. That's so wise. So you take a time to um to sabbath in a way that's unique to you and you said i think you said your husband does too yeah so in general as a family um and he is a pretty extreme extrovert (laughs) so um for us that means that sunday morning when we go to church um we serve in different capacities and Mm -hmm. he serves um, we serve on an every other week basis as a family. We each do different things, but we I coordinate them to be on the same Sundays. Um, but he can be, that is a time for him to be filled up, to um, be in a very people-oriented position in serving, yeah. and also just very intentional the rest of the weekend 
not the full rest of the weekend, but the, we have opportunities for connection with other people, mm-hmm. um, with our friend group, with um, neighbors, with family. We're very intentional. We're also very big on hospitality. So we host a lot of things at our house. So by the time Sunday comes, he has also been filled mm-hmm. in other ways um, okay. throughout the weekend as well. Okay. So you mentioned something about serving on Sunday mornings every other week. And I have had people ask me, what about Sunday? Like, what about if I'm serving in church? Does that count towards Sabbath? Is that work? And I often have said to them, does it fill you up? Yeah. Like, is it something that that um, that you find life-giving? If not, maybe reconsider it. But yeah. if you find it life-giving, do it. And it sounds like you two have found ways to serve in ways that are life-giving to you as individuals. So he serves in a more of an extroverted capacity. And do you serve in something that's a little bit more introverted? Yeah. So this is something I've given a lot of time and reflection to, because I I was never quite sure where I was going to fit in as far as serving, but I knew that it was important um, Mm -hmm. for for us to do that. And something I wanted my kids to see and participate in. Mm -hmm. So um, one of my daughters serves in the children's ministry. That is her gift and her life calling. So she does that. Um, My husband is an usher and um, seats people and is Mm -hmm. really like that connection point. Just that friendly person. For for people. Yeah. And he will get into all sorts of conversations. (laughs) My older daughter and I serve at the welcome table. So we are just like the greeters when you come in. So I'm still connecting with people, but I'm not like needing to get into conversation with them on Sunday morning. And then that's only like a 10 to 15 minute commitment. And then I'm into service. And part of what I I feel like it's important for me on Sabbath too, is to connect with God. And Mm -hmm. so serving to me is a way to do that. So for me personally, I feel like it fits in, in our Sabbath. Right. I love how intentional and how reflective you have been about that, because Mm -hmm. I think it can be really easy to just be like, oh, I'm supposed to serve. And this is Mm -hmm. the thing that they're, they have open at church in a way that I could serve. So I might as well just plug in here. But if you're not, plugging in in a capacity that allows you to really live into the ways that God has designed you, the ways that he's gifted you, the talents he's given you. If you can't operate in that unique design, you're not going to be serving as well as you could be. And you're probably going to experience burnout yeah, um, sooner rather than later, you know? So Absolutely. I think I, I really appreciate how you kind of laid out for us the, the thought process you had about that and how intentionally you approached that question of, should I serve on my Sabbath? So Mm -hmm. thank you for that. Yeah, absolutely. How has practicing Sabbath changed your life? Um, it, as I take a deep breath, um, I feel like it helped (laughs) me to just breathe. Um, I, I was at a place of overwhelm and I personally have had my own battles with anxiety. And Mm -hmm. so I knew that I needed to slow down. Um, Mm -hmm. I was convicted by a sermon series we were doing at church. And I also just knew that something had to change. Um, And I I tell my clients this, if you feel stuck, we have to like think or do something different, or we're just not going to get out of that cycle. Right. So um, also just wanting to be in obedience to him, to God. When we do that, um, we feel closer to him. And so I feel like God operates in rhythms or, or he he has, and he does, like, we just look at the creation story. Mm -hmm. And so knowing that I needed a different rhythm in my life. And again, as a person with a very full schedule, Mm -hmm. but also a pretty extreme introvert and somebody who desires to follow God. um, To me, I just, I knew that Sabbath could be that opportunity to kind of fill all of those, those needs. And it gives me that as I'm going through my week and I notice, again, I use that word a lot, but when I notice that I'm feeling yeah. overwhelmed or burnout, I know that like Sabbath is coming and that mm-hmm. I've carved that time out because if we don't intentionally carve that time out, whether it's Sabbath or pause or anything in, in our life connection, it's really easy to just not have that happen in our life because there will, are plenty of other things that can fill that time. Right. I think it, when you're talking, what came to my mind is that idea that life is busy and full. You're going to be tired. 
Like it just physically, you're going to mm-hmm. be tired. Mentally, you might be tired because you're carrying a pretty heavy load. But when you put the Sabbath rest into your week, you minimize that chance for exhaustion yes. and that breaking point of burnout. And I think that's the difference. Like I want people to understand that just because you practice Sabbath every week doesn't mean that you're not going to experience being tired. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just a natural thing. That's why we need the rest. And when you're working and you're exerting yourself, mm-hmm. there is a natural consequence to that of yeah. t- being tired. But Sabbath allows for that to be replenished and refueled and restored, you know, energy levels and, and whatnot. Yeah. I think that's an important point to think about the difference between being tired or being exhausted. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think when we operate in a continual rhythm of being full and busy all the time, and we don't take that time to pause, that's going to lead to that exhaustion and burnout. Right. And I liked what you were saying about noticing. And I think this is where, what it made me think of that is you're like, I keep using that word noticing, but I think it's true because when we're moving through our lives so fast, we, we lose the ability to notice, are we pushing ourselves past that exhaustion level? We, we lose the ability to notice the effect it's having on our relationships with God and with each other. And so the fact that it slows us down just enough, like we're not talking about slowing down to the point where all you're doing is you get up in the morning, you're like trudging through your day, you know, like mm-hmm. that's not what we're talking about. Like you're still have a full life and you, and you Mm -hmm. should, because God has called you to things and he has a kingdom purpose for you. And so Mm -hmm. you need to live into that calling and it's going to be full. It's an adventure with him. Right. Mm -hmm. But slowing down to become aware of the work you're doing with him and the way that your self is moving through that work with him. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about that kind of observation in our lives. What tips or suggestions do you have when it comes to practicing Sabbath? My biggest suggestion is just to decide, like decide that you are going to honor God and honor yourself by honoring Sabbath. Um, I think it has to be just like any other change we're going to make or goal we're going to set or rhythm we want in place. Like we have to decide to do it first. Mm -hmm. Um, So just deciding Also not feeling like you have to have it all perfectly planned out before you begin the rhythm of Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Just maybe starting with carving out a couple of hours or a day or whatever it is that works for you and your family. I think also really letting go of those should statements of what Sabbath, outside of what God has called it to, of what Sabbath quote unquote should look like. Um, I love that you're putting this out there and just giving people lots of different ideas because Mm -hmm. it's going to look different for different people in different seasons of life as well. Right. Um, And then then I think the other one is to just pay attention to your own emotional and mental and physical needs um, Mm -hmm. because that's going to tell you what you might need to incorporate into that Sabbath. Mm. So good. Yes. I think it's so important that people see that there's different ways in which you can approach the Sabbath, but the one recurring theme I see across the board is intentionality. Actually two themes. Every person I've talked to about their Sabbath practice, the things that come out are intentionality and just a commitment to keep showing up each week and doing Mm. it, even if it's not perfect, just Mm -hmm. keep showing up. And so I think if those two things are part of your practice, you're going to benefit from it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, um, do you suggest a Sabbath practice to your, to your clients at all? I'm just curious. Um, it's definitely come up in different conversations. My clients are at all different spots and walks of life in different places with their spirituality and all of that. But definitely if it is something where I'm seeing the, that exhaustion that we talked about mm-hmm. or that burnout, we're definitely talking about ways to pause. Um, and mm-hmm. that may include a conversation about Sabbath and probably even more frequent than that, um, yeah. in, in just creating, giving ourselves permission to pause and creating a rhythm of, of pausing and noticing, um, reflecting, connecting, mm-hmm. all of that. So yeah, it's definitely come up. Yes. And I'm assuming that would help with boundaries too, right? Yes. Yes. And boundaries is a, can be a big part of what we do, depending on what the person is, is walking through, but helping them to see 
that God has boundaries and Jesus had boundaries. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Sabbath is a really good example of a a boundary of intentionally um, carving out space. And it's, it's giving ourselves some framework um, to operate within. And, and I think it's a boundary in and of itself. Yes. Earlier in our conversation, you talked about boundaries, like moms just pouring everything into their kids. And we've talked about in our Sabbath practice, having time and space for yourself to recharge. Mm -hmm. And that's so important for moms. And I think we, we tend to put ourselves on the bottom of the priority Mm -hmm. list Mm -hmm. so easily. Um, But you're saying, Hey, you need to create this space for yourself. You need to have these moments of rest for yourself so that you can be a better mom, a better wife, a better, you know, friend putting that boundary in place. It doesn't um, make your relations less than with others. It actually benefits it and makes it more. Um, But you're also not advocating for a full day just to themselves either. You're advocating some time to themselves and then some time to connect with each other and their families. Mm -hmm. Do you think that setting your Sabbath up in that way kind of alleviates that mom guilt a little bit of like, if I take self-care practices, I'm being Mm -hmm. selfish and I, Mm -hmm. I don't have time to like, my kids need me. I can't spend an hour on myself. Do you think having that holistic picture helps? Absolutely. I see a ton of mom guilt, right? We all experience it as moms, I think, and I see it on different levels, but Part of this work too is to just rewrite that script in our head um, that says that that may currently say that self care is self- selfish or that boundaries are selfish. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like the three things that God has mainly called us to are to love God, love others, and make disciples. Mm-hmm. And I feel like in order to best do that, I have to take care of myself, right? Like the whole idea of you, you can't pour from an empty cup, right? So right. Um, if we can kind of pivot that thought or rewrite that script to know that, okay, because I am recharging in the way that I personally need to. So for me, that's some solitude. um, I am going the other, however many hours in a week there are, I'm going to be able to be a better, like you said, mom, wife, friend, employer, employee, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. Um, I absolutely think that if we think of, okay, then I can be my best self to them the other hours of the day or the week that we're going to be able to give ourselves that permission Mm -hmm. for that solitude. Um, And if, if need be, you know, we can look at Jesus um, and the example that he has given us Mm -hmm. in, in how he had, how he rested and paused as well. Yeah. I, (laughs) whenever moms say to me like, oh, I don't have time, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you, if you treated your children needs the way you treat your own needs, we would be having problems. Yeah. Me, right. Like people would have to get involved. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like sometimes we like, so neglect ourselves mm-hmm. because we believe that, that that's necessary and it's not, mm-hmm. it's not what God wants for us either. And so I hope if those of you who are listening, if you only take one thing away from this, mm-hmm. I hope that's what you take away from is that you have permission to rest mm-hmm. and it's something that God desires for you. Yeah. Well, Nicole, before we wrap up, why don't you tell us about a resource I knew you have for those listening? Yeah. So last year during the pandemic, when it first started happening, um, I I felt like God was taking me into Philippians and to Mm. probably the most talked about passage on anxiety of not to be anxious in Philippians 4. Um, So I dove into that a little bit deeper and created a resource called Path Toward Peace. And Mm. it talks about those verses that we so often hear, but maybe don't know how to apply. And so um, that is available on my website, which is restorativecc.com slash free dash resources. It's up in the right-hand corner too. It just says free resources and that's available there. And we'll definitely link to it in the show notes okay. too, that people yeah. can, can access it. Now, if somebody wants to connect with you, I know you're on social media, where yeah. can they find you? Yeah. So a couple of different places um, you can find my practice, my counseling practice, restorative counseling center, um, and 
one of the things that I'm really committed to do is just offering resources to not only our community, but also to those online. And so we have a weekly blog on there. So that's just a free resource in addition to the other one that I mentioned. And you can find Restorative Counseling Center both on Facebook and Instagram. And then also I personally work around connecting spirituality with mental health. And mm-hmm. that is also on Facebook and Instagram at Nicole K. Spryling. Nice. And we'll put those links in the show notes too, but just wanted to make sure people knew that they can get in touch with you and connect with you. Well, thank you so much for this conversation. Before we go, I would love to pray. Um, Do you mind if we close in prayer? That sounds wonderful. Okay. Oh, this has been a wonderful conversation, Father God. And I just thank you so much for Nicole and her wealth of wisdom and her, um, gentle way of just explaining the things that she has observed as a mental health um, counselor, Lord. And I just thank you so much for the wisdom that she has brought to this conversation. I pray for our listeners listening today that they would walk away from this and encourage that they can set that boundary to rest, encourage to to, um, just put down that mantle of self-neglecting motherhood and pick up an identity of reflecting you in both their work and their rest, Lord. I thank you that you have um, created a space for us to find a renewal and find a revitalizing and re-energizing in the ways that we are uniquely designed, Lord. And we thank you that you invite us into that. I ask a blessing on Nicole and her family. And I ask, I ask a blessing on all those listening today. May we enter into this week just encouraged and energized to walk this life that you have called us to and to walk into rest with you each and every week. Lord, we ask these things in your precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. Well, Nicole, thank you so much for joining me today. This has been a wonderful conversation. I know it's going to really... Um, bless those that are listening and give them the encouragement that they need to maybe set some boundaries and to be okay with and giving themselves permission to make those moments of noticing and pausing and, um, and maybe even implementing the Sabbath rest. And thank you for listening into today's episode. Let's plan to meet back here next week as we continue our conversation on Sabbath rest and what it could look like each week in your life. Bye. Hey, I just want to say thank you for joining me for today's conversation. I know many things demand your attention, and I don't take lightly the privilege it is to share your time. I want to make things as easy and simple for you. So I've linked to all the resources mentioned in the episode in the show notes. And you can always find the links and more helpful information on my website, www.rachelferenbach.com. As we say our goodbyes, let me remind you that what we're talking about in this podcast is not just another thing to add to your to-do list. This is not another expectation for you to live up to. It is a gift outstretched from the hand of your creator, an invitation to press pause on walking alongside Jesus in all the things he's called you to do, And instead, sit down across from him and just be with him. It is an invitation to simply Sabbath.